Hell, it's about time. If this arc is going to be the final one of Red, you go with the finish the fight vibe. Kaneki finally returned, but the outbreak is not over yet. It is becoming clear that the series is entering the last phase of the arc in which Kaneki, now back on his feet, prepares to end this chaos. Only this time, he will work with everyone. This great moving chapter Showcase the newly formed Kaneki in not just power, but as a character. Development is a wonderful pairing partner. The most disappointing aspect is we never got an interview with those monsters. Furuta tried his best to get a word from them, but unfortunately, they only dare to attack at anything. My hype has gone down significantly at that point. Okay, joking aside, Furuta is doing an amazing job on reporting the breaking news. I need that channel right now. The JFDF arrives and fires at them while Furuta is commentating the event like hype man. The problem is, he knows what they're in for. We are still isolated from knowing the whole picture behind Dragon, though he does explain how people are transforming into a ghoul. It's done like a poison spore, and it comes from Dragon whether you kill it or just explodes like with Psycho. Basically, it's a lose-lose situation, according to him, because if you kill it, you'll be infected. If you don't, it will just consume you for resources. Sniper would be nice for this case, but I think since they are everywhere and with limited resources, it wouldn't matter much anyway. Furuta is such a bastard in every sense. He plays off like a commentator for the kids to never give up on humanity. At least he let everyone know that their fight is far from over, so... Thanks? He clearly doesn't give a shit about anything but what he just obtained. I do have a bad feeling about the fact it is tape recorded that they all just watch. Where the hell is he now? While nothing has explained on Rize or the main agenda behind Dragon with V, it's another round for everyone to take on Dragon, but with the double side of negative effect. How can they? I assume it would mean they would have just keep repeating the same formula of destroying Dragon. But that could take a long, long time. By that point, everyone would be a ghoul. I believe what happens later here could give them an easier method. One of the more unsettling moments from this chapter is how it shifts back and forth with Furuta explaining the ghoulification and psycho looking sick. When I saw those panels reflecting each other, I was getting nervous on what was about to happen. I was rambling on saying, Don't do it, Ishida. Don't you freaking dare do it. After the video stopped, Psycho's eye becomes a Kagane, and being reminded of Shirazu's sister pained me severely. What is wrong with this man hurting innocent angels? Another unsettling yet pretty tense moment is when those monsters surrounded Uri and Kaneki with a handicapped Psycho. Could you imagine if we skipped the development phase of these characters? Let me tell you, they would have never reacted that way they did here. Uri was going to go down with the ship to help Kaneki to escape with Psycho. That is selfishly nice, but sad that got me biting my fist. Ishida must have thought we have it too good for too long. I was afraid of big development equals death was about to apply here and Uri would be the one. Psycho didn't want to leave him behind and insist that he and Kaneki to make an escape since she's affected already. That is selfishly charming, but sad because... Psycho was going to go down with the ship instead. The amount of tension is staggering with any of them don't want other to die. It's truly astounding that this scene alone shows the absolute growth of these characters. Uri wants no one to fall before him and Psycho was incredibly brave to take on death. That only leaves Kaneki to show his evolution. He certainly shows it. Part of me thought he would insist to go down even if he can't fight since he might lose control once more. The funny thing is, it probably would have happened if Kaneki decided to regress. His thought process is very much needed here to tell us his current state of mind. It's sort of play a mind game, no pun intended, to make you believe that his character is still in the same loop. 
which would probably upset the fans. Fortunately, he lets his friends come to his mindset and it's not for his sake, rather for others, as it should be. I was getting hyped up when he finally fisted and shouts out that he is tired of unable to do anything. That double page spread was outstanding. It is no surprise that this chapter's artwork is among Ishida's better form. And what timing then to exploit Kaneki's newly formed Kagane. I just love the distorted effects surrounding the pages to bring the extra flair. I don't think he has a new Kagane entirely. I see it as more of a Rinkaku in his maximum form. I could sort of back it up with a later explanation. Those wings look outstanding, reminisce closely to dragon beings. Kaneki obliterates all of those monsters in an instant, which tells me we are looking at a perfected ghoul. I like how Ishida emphasized the deformed hand since Kaneki had that for far too long. After the damage was done, his hand is finally fixed to the normal form. No words needed to be said, he's no doubt cured in more ways than one. Interesting that the chapter title appears once Kaneki is shown to be the title one. Smooth move there. Even though the Q squad already has Kagane in their system, they can't be affected with ROS, which is why Psycho's left eye mutated. You just couldn't let her rest, can you Ishida? In other words, the poison spore is dangerous to anyone. Uri could have been easily killed if he actually stayed behind and exposed his Kagane to the spore. It's a shame the cycle was already affected before, but at the very least, it hasn't gotten worse than you know who. I don't want her to think about it. I will forever say this, but Psycho doesn't belong in this series with her lovable care for her friends. Yes, I do mean it in a good way if you can fathom that thought. Even in the midst of dealing with this disturbing disease, she puts her friends first over her own. I wish you tears to the air if I could when Psycho wonders if Maman could end up like her. Talk about hitting the emotion hard. The most interesting element is Kaneki is actually immune to the poison spore. When he gets in contact, his count rate changes virtually nothing. He can shower them for a while and he will be fine. Okay, maybe that is too much, but the point is, he can't withstand the disease. In other words, Kaneki is the best person to go against Dragon. Lucky for them, they save him first before going against others because Kaneki is a good guy and he's the only guy they got. It does make me wonder if that's the case for Riza as well. On the bright side, from the moment on, the atmosphere begins to turn into a rising sun sensation. In other words, time for the hero to strike back. That small scene with Kaneki giving a head rub to Psycho to say everything will be alright is so charming. Psycho's smile adds so much to the moment. It gets me teary to see a sweet relationship like this. I will vouch for a slice of life series with this cast. It was at this point that you can already sense that Kaneki wants to meet Hide for not just for a reunion, but to finally let go of his burden. It makes sense of why he went outside first and just so happened to see his loved one being protected and lovable. Those are his motivations. Leave it to Toka to tell him the way to meet his old best friend, the one who she once vowed to kill if the secret was out. Time has truly changed. Add in with another gentle scene between Kaneki and Toka, reunited and living through hardship. This pairing is as magnificent as ever. Speaking of reunion, we finally got the long rated reunion with Hide and Kaneki. What amazes me is how casual they talk to each other like nothing bad has happened for either of them. To me, that speaks true friendship. They have gone through hell and back, but nothing has changed their interaction. That's incredible. It does get serious when Kaneki gets on to the other reason of seeing him facing his past action. I don't know how or why, but I didn't think about this before. Hide is a perfect candidate for Kaneki to face his fear. If he can't accept his actions that he has done to his beloved best friend, he is ready to face the world. That's a powerful way to reveal Hide's face, to be a symbol of many things. Hide Lore's face looks really bad. Not only is his lower skin ripped apart, but so has his left teeth and gum. What's even worse is that it doesn't end at the left side of the face region. It goes further down to the neck and the arm. I think this is Ishida's way of saying we have seen enough. 
with his other spots remain covered. I'll say. The ending defines Kaneki's character greatly. He finally accepted his action, and even though he cries about it, he knew it would hurt him, but thankful that he can face his sins. Hide is such a nice guy, they always put him first than himself. He only covered that face for his sake, rather than avoided it to be disgusted. That's a best friend right there. To top it all off, Kaneki recites the same line from chapter 128 of part 1 about a tire of not doing anything. This time, ask help from his loved ones. Development is godsend. If this chapter is the last of the volume, then it certainly sets the grand stage for the next and possible final volume. Even if it's not, it was a great chapter to show the long way to rewards after many of heartaches. Kaneki has finally changed for the best. Many of his bounty moments with various characters are sweet, charming, and delight. The artwork is great with splendid detail. Kaneki is finally stepping up because he is done with this. Time to finish the fight. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. I believe this chapter is somewhat confirmed that Kaneki can be used as a vaccine or cure for a lot of people who is infected by this poison spore. I'm not sure how they're going to do it because it sounds like they're going to end up using him like a guinea pig. But who knows? Maybe they'll find a different way without making him look like a slave or something like that. I do think they're going to take care of Dragon first or at least try to take care of Furuta wherever he is. I don't know if the next volume is the last one. But we'll see, because it does seem like now that Kaneki is back on the main character role and it has that finish the fight vibe with Kaneki finally developed in the right direction, it could be set enough for the next volume to be the definitive and final one. One way to find out is to continue on. Share your thoughts in the comments. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care. <laughs>